Hi folks, Glyn Dewis here, uh, episode 70, and in this episode I want to show you something from this new picture, which is how I actually created that water at the bottom that the rhinos reflected in. All right, so first things first, I've got an admission to make here. I didn't actually create the water myself. It's actually a plugin, and that's the purpose of this video here. It's a bit different this time around. It's not exactly a tutorial, but more I want to show you a plugin that I'm using, which I'm absolutely loving for creating water. Now, before I show you the plugin, then let's just dive over to show how this picture was first of all made. Well, here is how the picture started. I'm always going out photographing just fields and skies and you name it, going out there collecting a free library of stuff. So this is how the Rhino picture started. And you can see here how it's all been built up, adding in this kind of like uh, area here. If I just close that off, this is like another field that I've put over the top. And then we've kind of painted a little bit away using a layer mask just to reveal a little bit of that mud where the rhino is eventually going to be placed and you can see that he's been placed in the actual uh, layers here and then we've gone through and started to add other little bits in as well so there's shadows there's dodging and burning and all that kind of stuff so I'm not taking it all the way through that but it's the water like I said that I want to show you and it's an absolutely superb plugin by a company called Flaming Pear so let me just show you then how we can actually use that. Here's a flattened version of the actual Rhino picture. I've got the bottom area here where I want the water to be placed. Now you think that when we're using filters, nowadays we wanna work non-destructively and we wanna try and use these smart filters. So I'm gonna first of all click on convert to smart filters. First job will do its thing. It'll convert that background layer, if you like there, into a smart object. But the problem is, when we go to use the flaming pair uh, filter at the bottom, we can see here that it's grayed out. We can't actually use this plugin as a smart filter just yet. So let's just backtrack and I'm just gonna actually go Command or Control J to create a copy. And I'm just gonna rename that layer there by double clicking on it and we'll call it water. Okay, so then we're gonna use the plugin. We go to filter, we're gonna go to flaming pair and it's called flood. So when I click on flood, it brings up the huge dialog box here. And what you'll notice is by default, it places water already in a part of your image. And it's kind of like water going off into infinity. Now, we obviously don't want it to be that way, but we have a bit of a play around with it first of all, because on the left-hand side, there's loads and loads of different controls where you can control uh, the horizon line, how far up or how low down you want that water to be. And then you can really play around with these sliders over here to, to kind of make the water look exactly how you want it to be. You might want it to look like a real mill pond, very still kind of bit of water. We can take the waviness slider down to zero. And then we've got a really cool kind of reflection there. That would actually be really good for those of you who do car photography, creating a kind of reflection there on a black surface. This would work really, really well for that. So that's a pretty good one to think about for the future. But loads of different sliders here you can play around with just to sort of affect the water how you'd want it to be. So when I actually did this to put the rhino in, because I didn't want the water going off into infinity, I only wanted it to be in that kind of bottom portion. What I did was I used the horizon slider here just to kind of position the water so that it was just covering about halfway up the rhino's leg so that we still had a fairly decent sized reflection at the bottom. Now when we do that, I'm gonna then click OK. That'll then send us back into Photoshop and apply that water. And then it's just a simple case of using a layer mask. So now I'm gonna add a black layer mask to it. I'm gonna hold down my Alt or Option key and click on the layer mask icon to hide that water. Get a brush and we'll go for a kind of like maybe 20 odd percent hardness, something like that. Making sure the foreground color is white and then we can start painting in that water using this plugin here. I mean, if I could paint it myself, if my name was Aaron Blaze, I'd probably do it, but sadly not. I'm gonna to have to resort to using this plugin. But I think you agree, that's a pretty cool plugin. Really liking that a lot. Now, one thing I also did, and you'll see that in the picture just here, if I bring up a few more of these layers, you can see that we've actually got this uh, muddy bank area here as well, where the actual water has been added in. I wanted to add that in for a little bit more realism. And all that is, if I go over to uh, Lightroom here, let's just bring back some of these uh, tabs 
and we'll just show you a folder I've got on here called miscellaneous. Now in here, you can see there's all kinds of things that I've photographed. This is where I just collect stuff and throw it into Lightroom for future use. But some of the stuff I've got way down here is this stuff here. Let's just press E to bring that up. And you can see this is just little puddles that I've seen in mud on the side of the road. And I photograph these. And to actually make that water bank, I've just collected a few of these together, made a few of them go across the whole width of the picture and just use a layer mask to blend them all in to make it kind of like look like the, the sort of bank of that water there is a little bit wet just to add in the realism. So like I say, it's just a really, really quick video, not a tutorial, but just a video to kind of uh, bring this plug into your attention. I was first shown this when uh, a friend of mine called Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys on Kelby One, did that in a, an episode of Photoshop User TV. And I remembered a while back him doing that and it's just worked out perfect for actually using in this picture here. Now, if you want to get it, when well, you can actually do a 30 day trial with this flaming pair. Oh, and I get absolutely nothing for promoting these, by the way. I'm just using them because I really like them. Uh, go to flamingpair.com. You can then go to the product section and then you'll see it's got like a bundle discount. But if you don't want to buy them as a bundle, you can just say click here to order and then you can go and actually look for the individual items. And you can see at the top here, flood on its own to purchase here, 21 pounds. Uh, or whatever it's going to be in your own currency over on the right hand side. So there you go, just a really, really quick one. Thought I'd give you a very quick uh, look at how I went about making this rhino picture that I've had a few people asking about. Some people asking if I'd actually drawn it and all that kind of stuff, but um, sadly not. Not quite that good yet, but uh, you know, the plugin works really good. So I hope that's helpful. I'll see you next time.